actually kind of unique. Um, when I was 17, I got hurt in the weight room and my high school coach knew how much I loved being around the game. And so he asked me if I wanted to help coach the freshman team uh, just so I could still be around it. And so I took that. That was the first coaching position I had. And at the same time, my brother was in the full third grade. He was in the third grade. And uh, his basketball team didn't – his club team didn't have a coach. So I told my dad, like, oh, I'll do it. And so my dad kind of was like, eh, he wasn't so sure about it. So another week went by, they still didn't have a coach. And so the program director called back again and was like, yo, listen, if they don't have a coach, like, we're not going to have a team. And I was like, dad, I'll do it. So he, like, sat me down and explained to me, like, this isn't one of those things where you just miss practice because you want to go hang out with your friends or you want to do this and you want to do that. So I was like, no, nah, I understand it. Um, so those were the – I coached both those teams uh, my first year, and it was a really good experience and kind of just been doing it ever since. Year 19 here. Oh, nice. Year 19, wow. That's that's yeah. that's that's amazing. So is there any specific age group that you enjoy coaching the most? It's not. I, I've coached I've coached second grade boys. I've coached 17 new girls. Um I enjoy it all. On the boys' side, I'd rather coach younger. Mm -hmm. I'm I'm big on the on the younger boys. And on the girls' side, uh that seventh, eighth, ninth grade. You know, that's kind of the sweet spot with girls, you know, coaching them at those, those ages. Okay, like that. So, Randall, tell us a bit about your business then. What does your, your company specialize in? Uh, my company is Outwork Everyone Basketball here in Charlotte, North Carolina. Um, we specialize in basketball training, um, the full gambit of games. We start with kids, you know, all the way um, from five years old all the way up to professionals. Uh, we get to, we get to train all of them and, and just working on everything from speed and agility to being more explosive to shooting and ball handling. We, we work on it all. Okay, like that. So tell us a bit about, because you you just mentioned that you go from ages five all the way to professionals. So talk, about, talk to us a little bit about the difference between coaching um both of them obviously age group and, and ability level but what do you need to have in order to be able to coach both so sometimes you just you just you just well with the younger ones you definitely have to have patience um <laughs> you know with because you have to keep their attention they're gonna they're gonna run them on they're looking at you know they're doing a bunch of stuff so keeping them focused when they're working uh is probably the most important part with that age group Right now, that's I really enjoy that age group now because I have kids that are actually like they want to be here, they want to do it, and they're actually pretty good. So, um, working with the younger kids is, is you know kind of one of the bright spots of my week because mm -hmm. I kind of get to see them grow and continue to get better. And you know, God, Lord willing, I'll be able to watch them and kind of be in the same position as some of my other middle school and high school athletes here soon. Mm -hmm. Okay, cool. And what about working with with more professional players? What what do you need to work with players at that for, at that level? You have to you have to be very detailed when you're working with pros. Um, you know, understanding how the movements of the game, understanding understanding the spacing on the floor. There are so many things that you have to you know take into account when you're working with pro athletes. And so you really you know when you're working with them, you have to make sure that you're putting them in a position to be successful and make sure that the stuff that they use in their game, you know, is directly correlating to the work that you're doing. Um, so it's, it's, it's kind of cool for me. You know, there's a program out there where I'm able to watch, you know, my pros, uh, even, you know, my college players, and also some of my ex, uh, elite high school athletes where, you know, they kind of break down the games for me. Mm -hmm. And so I can see, you know, what specific shots they're getting, uh, where they're struggling at, and, and then that way we can kind of focus on, okay, you're not really shooting the ball well from 18 to 22 feet, so we can work on that. Or, you know, you're not really shooting the ball well off the dribble. So, uh, you know, paying attention to those little details and understanding where, you know, players' strengths and weaknesses are and how you can help them during the all season is super important. Mm -hmm. Like that. So when you first started your business, like in your head, who did you want to train? What, what? How did you have the business it panned out? Well, in your I, head? I, I've been in the business since 2009. So I already had, you know, I had been at one facility and that's kind of how I got started. I kind of fell into it. I had no idea what basketball training even was. And I had a couple kids request to come work out with me. And so we did that. 
Um, and so uh, kind of got into that. And then I had a, a, a company come and recruit me and they took basketball a little bit more seriously over there and they really worked. So I went over there for five years and, you know, got to work with some, some pros and really learned a lot. Uh, and when I left there, I was actually planning on transitioning out of basketball training, but, you know, the Lord had other plans for me. So, you know, I started my own business. So, you know, really, I just wanted to help kids that wanted to be in the gym. I just wanted kids that wanted to work, wanted to be in the gym, wanted to get better. And those were, that was my target. And so from my, my previous job, um, you know, when kids found out that I was still training and that I left and that I was on my own, you know, a lot of those kids called, text, you know, came and found me and were like, yo, we want to, we want to come work with you. So, you know, I started out, you know, ahead of the curve a little bit. Mm hmm Okay, that's cool. So how many clients do you currently work with in total? We have we average about 125 to 150 clients a month. Wow. Excellent. Yeah. Is that all in groups or is that private ones? It's month? all groups and, and private as well. We have a mixture of both. Um I have have some some guys that are that come in and help me. Um, you know, three or four guys that come help me make sure we can get everything in that we need to get in on a weekly basis. Okay, I like that. So you've been part of our uh, business coaching program for a while now. Uh, talk to us a little bit about how your business has changed since since being part of the program. I think the good thing about our program is that if you really pay attention and, and listen to other people, you know, there are people that have really good ideas and have ideas that maybe you haven't thought about. Um, you know, the biggest change that's happened to me since I joined the group was me actually getting my own facility. And, and taking that and then, you know, kind of figuring out ways to offset costs with that, you know, as far as renting the facility space out when I'm not using it, um, which are things that I think most people don't think about. So it's been beneficial to me because I'm one of those people that I don't feel like I know it all. So even though I might not be the most active person and I might not be on every call and things like that, I still go back and try to try to listen to calls or, you know, now I really try to pay attention to what's happening in the group and, you know, since I've been doing this for a while, um, I think change can be harder for a person that's been in this business longer. And so, you know, I, I have no problem admitting that. I know it's not necessarily a strength of mine. So, you know, I'll put myself out there sometimes to get feedback from the other people in the group, even though they might be younger or more unexperienced, they might have ideas and things like that that I've never thought about or, you know, a reason for doing something that I never thought about. And so just transitioning that way is, is pretty important to me. Mm -hmm. Like that. So what was one of the biggest obstacles you faced before joining the program? I think just being, being organized. I think organization was, was kind of hard, you know, I, before the program, you know, I'm calling people every day or, you know, every week trying to get a kid in and trying to, you know, just scheduling workouts kind of, you know, getting a more organized schedule and having, having somewhere where we can kind of, where I know, how many workouts I have on each day, who's coming to the gym, you mm -hmm. know, who, who's supposed to be in those places. I think that's super important. Okay. Like that. So where, where, where do you see private training going in the next two to five years from now? The funny part about it all is that I, it, it changes on a yearly thing. I was telling, I was telling Nick in the group the other day, like this has been the first year where private training really picked up for me. Um, mm -hmm. And it wasn't necessarily the way I wanted it to. I had designed like a one-on-one -on -one program and last year. And so I had kids in the one-on-one -on -one program and, you know, some of those kids graduated, a couple of them stopped playing. So it kind of fizzled out, but everybody, we still offered one-on-one -on -one packages. But last year was the first, or this past year was the first year where people like actually wanted that. And so, you know, we have like <clears throat> 15 to 20, you know, just private, you know, small, you know, private one, one-on-one -on -one or two-on-one, -on -one, you know, uh, clients. And so, you know, that was, that was something I wasn't expecting for 2022, but you know, it, it's, it's been good for business and I've kind of, I kind of like it. Um, I think you get to do a lot in those sessions. So I think there's a balance between, you know, the, the benefits of being in a small group and also the benefits of being in, in a, you know, private workouts. Absolutely. So you've, got your your own facility correct yep yeah so any coach watching and well what most coaches want is they all want their own facility that's for sure for me. 
the, the, the goal and aim of most of the coaches we speak to. So talk to us a bit about how you get to that level then. What what do you need in particular to get to that I, level? I think I think you have to be patient. And I remember COVID happened and I remember going to my business advisor and being like, we need to build a gym. And he was like, we don't need to build a gym. And I was like, yes, we do. Like, he was like, you know, there's tons of gym space here in Charlotte. You don't need to build a gym. And he was like, this is what I'll do. You call every rec center, you call every church, you call every school, and you ask them about gym space. And if you can't find any gym space from all those places, then we'll talk about building a gym. So I picked mm -hmm. up the phone and was just calling, calling, calling. And I ended up with like seven or eight gyms. Um, the gym that I'm at now, um, I got lucky. I was, I've, I've been using it for a couple of years, but at the beginning of the year, the guy who was leasing the court ended up deciding to move to California. So the owner knew I was interested. He knew I'd been, been in there all the time. So it was just an easy transition to say, Hey, do you want to, do you want to take over the, the court space? So as soon as he asked me, uh, it was a no brainer. Um, yeah. So it was, it's been super beneficial to me because I have my own space that I can use um, 24 seven and, mm -hmm. you know, I'm able to get clients in when, when they need to get in. And if I need to go over there and do stuff, you know, I can get over there. So, um, you know, it works like that for me um, pretty well. And then mm -hmm. the ability to be able to, when I'm not using it, to be able to lease it out to other trainers where they can rent it just to, you know, lower my overhead as well mm -hmm. from a business standpoint, which is something that made sense. <clears throat> yeah. So for you, was it a case of just you wanted your own space in, in the sense that you, you wanted your own space to do your program or was it because you were struggling to find uh, space during the year is that why you wanted your own facility I wanted my own facility mainly because like I had I was relying on other people and I didn't want to have to rely on other people like the space I was in previously it was two of my buddies and I we were all in the space and we'd be in there you know Monday through Thursday from like mm -hmm. five o'clock to eight nine o'clock which was fine until COVID hit and yeah. COVID hit and the company was like, we're not going to have anybody else in there. They haven't opened the doors back up. So when that happened, I was kind of just stuck. And I was like, yeah. where am I going to go? So mm -hmm. I was renting this gym space. I was doing some stuff outside. Uh, one of the schools was still letting me in there a day or two a week. But, you know, now that I had my own space, I'm, I was able to build out the program the way that I saw it, envisioned it being uh, years ago. Um, and having a strict schedule where it's like, you know, if you're in this group, you come at this time, this group comes at this time. And we kind of, and everybody kind of knows like, Hey, we're on the floor from four to seven. We're on the floor from four to eight, you know, mm -hmm. you know, five, four days during the week, you know, we, our Fridays are normally light mm -hmm. and then we go for a couple hours on Saturday, a couple hours on Sunday. So that's, that's been the most important thing with having my own facilities, just being able to structure it out you know, our program out the way that I, I wanted it built out in, uh, in the years past. Good, like that. So what piece of advice would you give to any any basketball trainer that's watching or listening to this and they, they're they struggling to find a facility? What's, what's one piece of advice? I would, I, would, I would get online and I would Google, you know, wherever city you're in, whatever state you're in. I Google that, you know, that city and state with – churches that have basketball basketball uh gyms or you know schools that have gyms or things like that um you know there's a lot of different ways to skin a cat and i think you know i think the best piece of advice that i would try is if you have a relationship with a high school coach or you know of a high school coach you know reaching out to them and talking to them and you know offering your services in exchange for gym time mm -hmm. uh could could be beneficial uh and could be a fair trade uh, yeah. you know, that's something I did at the beginning with, with a couple of the high school programs here when they were kind of really playing at a high level. So it kind of helped business because, you know, now, you, you know, your name gets attached to these programs that are, that are playing really good. And it wasn't done intentionally. It's never been done intentionally. It just, it just happened that at the times that they were really, really good, their best players were the, were clients of mine. So it kind of, kind of worked out. Yeah. Cool. So, what do you look for when you bring on a new client? <clears throat> How bad they want it. Like, do you really want to be there? I think the biggest thing is like some people just sign clients up and they're just happy to get a payment. And that's not really how my company operates. 
we are every we're not for everyone and i'm not for everyone and i tell parents that all the time and i've had kids that you know they could be really really good players and i just be like can't do it you know i've had some kids who i've turned away in the past and they had to kind of grow up a little bit and show me that this is really what they wanted to do before i would take them on as clients um because especially in a group setting because i think in a group setting it can really like you know, if you have a kid that doesn't want to be there and then you have a coach that has to deal with that. And then you have other kids that have to deal with it. You know, nobody's happy. Yeah. yeah. And so the biggest thing for me is to try to avoid that. So, you know, we try to make sure that the kid is a good fit and that they want to work. Uh, it doesn't necessarily matter to me how good they are, things like that. Like, I just want you, you want to be in the gym. You have a goal. We're here with a purpose. All right, let's work. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So what, what piece of advice would you give to a trainer or a coach watching and they have to deal with a difficult client? How do you, how do you approach a, a difficult client? I'm a, I'm a face-to-face kind of person. Mm-hmm. So, you know, difficult conversations, I'd rather have face-to-face, especially when dealing with a parent. Um, you know, I've had to talk to some parents and just tell them, like, listen, uh, you know, I know that you bought this package. It's my fault because we obviously didn't do a good job of evaluating your child or, you know, sometimes kids goals change and sometimes kids have been in the program for so long and you realize that change and you just go to the parent and he he really doesn't want to be here. It's not what he wants to do. Um, And and it's important to have notice that, you know, I had a young lady this, this summer who, you know, she, her basketball journey, was it was rough. Um, she didn't play on good teams. She didn't play with good people. Her school team was not very good, and she just got tired of it. And so, you know, we got to a point where I was like, "Listen, she doesn't really want to do this. Like, I don't even think she's going to try out for the high school team. Like, we should probably just, you know, give her a break. Let's see where she's at." And I was right. So it, it happens sometimes, and you just have to be able to, you know, I, a know your clients well enough to where you see that, and b be strong enough to go talk to the parents and have those hard conversations. Um, but I think the the biggest thing as a young trainer that you don't want to do is you don't want to try to justify the actions of your clients or clients' parents in your head. Uh, I think sometimes we get, oh, it's okay that they did it. It's just this one time. Or, oh, it's not that big of a deal. And you do these things and then it becomes habits and other people start to do it and, mm-hmm. and, and things can kind of get out of hand if, if you don't address them up front. Yeah, yeah, love that. Love that response. So talk to us a little bit about your current sales and marketing process. How do you sell and market your business? Well, we uh, you know, we all our stuff is online, so pe- people can go online and purchase purchase things online. Um we have we do you we use MailChimp as our as our direct, you know, as our direct marketing. So we send out, you know, all a lot of our information goes through MailChimp. And I also have a social media director. And so she's in charge of creating all of our content. She's posting reels online. She's posting flyers on, online. And she has like a, a marketing calendar where she, this goes out this day, this, you know. So that's how, that's how a lot of it takes place. Uh, obviously, mm-hmm. this time of year, I'm getting phone calls. I'm getting texts. <clears throat> so, I, you know, to stay organized, I have a Google Doc and I put, you know, person's name, their info, their number, their email, you know, mm-hmm. the kid's name you know, when we invited them in for a workout, what happened after the workout, you know, did we close it? So just trying to stay organized and, and button up in those ways, I think, you know, those are the, those are the most important things. Um, I think word of mouth is still the big, the biggest ticket for me. Um, mm-hmm. Just asking kids, asking kids, asking players, you know, uh, having kids bring in their teammates and things like that for a free workout is, is super important. Mm-hmm. So do you run the business by yourself or do you have staff at the moment? I run the, I run the, the business by myself. Um, I do have independent contractors who, who help me, um, you know, on a, on a weekly basis. Uh, I have about four or five other guys who I can, I can lean on, you know, to help, help with workouts when we need it. Okay, good. So talk to us a little bit. How do you build a team and what do you look for in a coach when you bring them on? That's a really good question. Um, <laughs> the the thing that you want to look for is somebody that really wants to do this. Yeah. Uh, I think as an owner, nobody's going to love this business as much as I do. Mm-hmm. And so, A, I have to realize that. Like, nobody's going to care as much as I care. Mm-hmm. So you try to find guys who are, who are you know, find people who, A, want to be there, 
who want to work and who are invested. And I think it's, it's really hard. Like it's really hard, especially in this climate to find really good people, mm -hmm. you know, who check all the boxes. And, and luckily I've been, in, I've been good enough to where, you know, I had a, a player who was, he trained with me for, since he was nine. Uh, he just graduated college and he's taking a break before law school. So, you know, he was like, I, I want to do some work. I want to get into training. And so, you know, he's been helping out. Um, you know, we have a, a couple other guys who come and help out high school coaches that, so it's, you know, they have a little skin in the game and, you know, it's something that they want to do and they want to be involved in. Um, you know, obviously, you know, the hard part for me has just been finding somebody who kind of, has the vision of want to doing this full time and not necessarily even at the beginning, but like, this is what they want to do. Uh, and that's kind of, that's kind of the biggest thing for me is I understand like at my age, I'm not going to be able to do this forever. Um, but there was a reason why I didn't name my company Randall Clark basketball training. And it's called outwork everyone because I wanted this to be a, be something that could go on mm -hmm. even when I was done or, or gone, like I wanted it to still be something that, you know, people could, people could, you know, still work, work in and work for and, you know, take pride in. So mm -hmm. that's the hardest part, I think, in the business right now for me is just finding somebody who kind of has that drive and that kind of want to, to kind of, kind of come do this. Okay, nice. So where, where do you see your business run though in the next five years from now? Hopefully double the amount of kids. Hopefully, you know, I find somebody that where we can start to get to these separate locations. Um, you know, I actually, I have a, I have a plan and I have a bunch of little things, a lot of things that I want to do, but I understand that if you don't have the right people in place, it would make no sense. So, you know, just trying to be patient and find the right people and the right locations and things like that to kind of grow it out. Um, you know, I think we, we have it built out the right way and now it's just, finding finding the right situations that make sense for everybody else to kind of kind of take it and run with it now awesome so i'm going to finish with this this last question it's more a personal question so first one is well it's a two-part one. First one is what does failure mean to you and the second one is how important is taking risks in business failure is what hurts the most uh, I think when you don't, when you have a goal and you don't achieve it, it hurts. And I think that hurt, if, if, if used right, it can help you motivate you, can help to refocus you, can, can get you to where you want to go. Um, you know, everybody loves to celebrate wins, but I think the losses for a person like me are, are what I remember the most. Um, you know, I don't necessarily really remember a lot of wins, but I, I, there are some losses that I can tell you right off the top of my head. So I think, you know, I think sometimes fair is good if it can focus you and you can get the right mindset from it and and, and learn from it, yeah. you know. Okay. Uh, what and was the, the second part of the question, Leo? Yeah, so the second one is how important is taking risks in business? I think taking risks is super important. Um, I think that there can't be a, fail, a fear of failure. Um, I think in taking risks, it's important because it, it can, it can allow you to see just how far you can go. Um, I, I'm not saying you have to be, you know, unresponsible with them. You know, obviously there's a, you want to know what you're doing. You want to have a plan, but if you don't take that risk, you'll never know. One of my favorite, favorite lines is, you know, we don't always make the right decisions, but we can make our decisions right. And so just trying to stick by that motto. And if I do something and it, it ends up looking like, man, I shouldn't have done it. How can I fix it to make it right? Uh, I think that's super important, you know, not only in business, but in life. Yeah. Okay. Awesome. Love that. Well, Randall, want to uh, thank you again for, for coming on and sharing not just your story, but sharing some, some really important advice with our audience. Um, now, if any coach is watching and they're inspired by you and they want to get in contact with you or follow your business, what is the best way to do that? We are OWE Basketball uh, on Instagram, on Twitter, 
we have an Outwork Everyone Basketball Facebook page. Um, so those those you can you can definitely find me on on all three of the three of those social media outlets. Awesome, perfect. And what we'll do is we'll add that to the bottom of the video, so anyone can can find you there. Awesome, I appreciate it, Leo. All right, Randall. Well, thanks again. And what I would like to do is I'd like to bring you on in twelve months from now, see where you are with with your business, and see how you've progressed since the last time we spoke. For sure, I love it. Awesome. All right, Randall, take care and see you soon. All right, Leo, have a great night.